Hello and welcome to the HBM Frequently Asked Questions video series. My name is Jason Osborne, Application Engineer out of Detroit, Michigan. Today we're going to be talking about um, some of the torque wiring. We get a lot of calls on how to wire the torque transducers. We want to go through um, each one. Today we're going to be um, reviewing the T40B and also the T12 uh, slash T12HP uh, wiring. We'll dive into to each one of these independent and then at the very end I have um, some general topics for wiring that we'll go over. So we're going to start with the uh, T40, T40B. On port 1 um, of the uh, T40B, it's frequency output and supply voltage. Port 2 um, is your speed and your speed with your reference pulse, if you have that option. Port 3 um, is your voltage output and supply voltage. Um, port 4 is your TMC. Now we're going to cover each one of these individually, but TMC um, is, a, a, is a proprietary channel that we use um, that goes into some of our other modules, um, like the TIM40, uh, for example, that we'll cover uh, here. So I'm going to go through each one, um, kind of give you some brief notes about it, and then a lot of these will carry over uh, once we get into the T12. So um, a lot of them will, will carry over and be the same, but some of them will obviously be different. So out of part one is your frequency. Um, this is set up um, on two, on pins two and three on this one is your supply um, voltage to your actual transducer itself. Um, so on this pen, um, also on six and seven, you can get a shunt. Um, with this, we always su uh, suggest to do a different uh, supply. Uh, that way it gives you better results and gets rid of any of your grounding loop. So I also want to point out um, all of the stuff that I'm going to be covering here in this video um, is covered in the manuals. Um, so you can download our manuals right off of um, our website and all this stuff is here, but I just wanted to go through and, and talk about it. Uh, in general. So on port 2, um, there's a couple different options depending on what uh, option your torque transducer has for your speed and for your um, speed with reference balls. So the way that um, the, the reference balls is set up, it basically gives you, a, um, this is where your angle, so it'll, it'll tell you a reference balls every 360 degrees. So wanted to touch base with this real quick. Um, Basically, it's a square wave pulse, um, and depending on if you have this option or not on your transducer, you can get the actual angle of your um, of your rotor. So on pen three, um, pen three is a seven pin, uh, basically set up the same as uh, port one, um, but with this one, it's a voltage output. Um, so be aware with this one, anytime that you have voltage, it is acceptable to uh, additional noise. So you'll have to take some extra care to uh, get rid of some of that noise source uh, in your test rig. So we always suggest to go um, digital and in the frequency range and then um, voltage. But on this one, it's set up the same. Pins 2 and 3 are your supply volts. And then 6 and 7, um, you can run a separate shunt. Uh, to that, and then um, your your torque is going to come out of um, pins one and four. So the next one that I'm going to talk about is port four. This is that TMC, that test measurement channel um, that we had, that I had mentioned earlier. Um, with this one, um, this goes into our a uh, couple of our other modules. The module that you see here is our TIM40 module. So basically, what this is. Um, is you can um, connect the speed and uh, torque right from this, uh, whether it be the frequency output on your X3 port or this TMC um, coming out of your uh, port 4 of your actual transducer itself. So what this is, this is your scaling. Um, you can do filtering, you can do zeros. So this is like um, additional outputs. In addition to the TIM40, on this one, uh, there's a field bus interface um, that you could go um, Ethernet or Profinet with just a, uh, a different card. So I'm going to step through the uh, T40 um, wiring real fast. Um, this one is a, uh, a voltage supply coming in out of X1. So it's 18 to 30 volts. 
um, and then also this can be used um, for an additional shunt. So on this one, if you're running the TIM40 coming into your port 4, you do not need a separate power supply going into your actual transducer. This is a pass-through power, so this will work right from here. Um, you can also set up a shunt, um, like I mentioned before, always a separate shunt uh, power supply. So on the connector X2, um, pins 1 and 2 is your, um, is your power supply for that. X3 is your main one. Um, this one here is your pass-through power, your shielding for your actual torque signal. Um, and then X4 and X5 are your frequency out and analog outputs. So if you want to loop this into your control loop, if you want it to um, do other limits or things like that, you can do that right from your um, additional analog or frequency output coming right out of the TIM40. So that's a, a, another quick option with this. But the main option um, is your setup. Um, you can go through and set up how to do, uh, how you want your actual uh, signals to come out, how many decimal points, uh, the naming conventions, and things like that. So that's uh, all things you can do right from there. So next I'm going to jump into the um, T12 and the T12HP. Uh, both the T12 and T12HP have identical wiring systems. Um, the only thing that's different um, in the two, which I, it's explained in another one of my videos in detail, but uh, in general, there's additional potting um, and also te different temperature compensations. So with that, you get a little bit better accuracy. So look for one of my other videos uh, between the difference between the T12 and the T12HP. So on port one, uh, just like the T40, it's the frequency out and voltage supply. Um, port two is your speed and your speed with reference pulse. Three is your voltage out and your voltage supply. And then four and five um, are your CAN outputs or your CAN and Profi outputs, depending on which option you select. I'm gonna walk through the uh, wiring on this one. On the it's a seven pin on port one, same as the T40, with your supply volt and your shunt and your frequency out signal. Also wanted to touch base um, on this one, uh, the same as the, the T40. There's the, I've also included some of the different cables that HBM supplies, um, the KAB153 uh, cable. That's basically our, um, a shielded cable that has open ends so you can put them into um, your other control systems or um, your data collection systems. Uh, the KAB149 pin is uh, it's already pre-wired for D sub or you can go the um, the 178 which is an HD sub plugin um, and it's already pre-wired so you can get those in various links right off of our website or contact your local sales engineer. Uh, port 2 is your speed, um, basically the same as the um, T40. 3, um, again, this is your uh, voltage uh, output, again with your shunt. Um, on the T12s, we do not have um, an option for um, TMC. This one is set up to go digital, so with the CAN output or with the Profi bus output options, um, you can select um, either pins, uh, port four or five, and then set up the um, Profi bus. So pin five can be used as an additional CAN port, or it can be used as Profi bus. And the Profi bus option, um, that's a, a, an additional cost. So if you're going to order um, the T12 or T12HP, make sure you're aware of what option you want um, to go out digital. Another um, item that we have um, that can be used for both the T12 and the T12 HP and the T40B is the TIMEC or the TIMPN. Um, basically what that is, it's a small um, module that's used for collecting data and sending it out either on EtherCAT or on Profinet. And again, you can get all this information right from the TIMEC manual or the TIMPN manual um, right off of our website. 
So with this one here, it's set up a little bit different. Um, again, this is a pass-through power. You can set up additional um, speed encoders with this that will also come out on Profinet. That's going to be your X1 port. Your um, power port on X2 um, is the same as the, the TAM40. It's a pass-through power. So again, you don't need uh, power supply on 1 and 3. So this um, is another way to um, reduce some of your cables um, so you don't have uh, additional power supplies going. So it's a pass-through power. Um, then all you need is the, is the cable going in. Um, X3 is uh, your speed encoder with a reference pulse. This is going to be your opposite signal to get your angle. Um, with the TIM and the TIMPN, um, there's a couple different ways to um, get the data out, whether you're using the frequency output or if you're using a TMC uh, output on a T40. So those are the wiring. Um, wanted to go over a couple um, quick things with wiring. Um, you can get real cheap wire, or you can get good wire. Um, that's going to be basically the, you know, the, the your data quality that you get out. Um, all of our cables are twisted pair shielded cables to get rid of uh, any of the noise. Um, they all have common screens, so that's a, a big source of noise if you don't have that. So here's a quick example of our, um, our twisted pairs. Um, also wanted to um, touch base when we're talking about wiring um, is to go through and, and set up how you set up your test rigs. Um, if you use a, a bunch of cable that's all um, wound up together, um, this was an example from one of our, um, our customer visits um, that had a bunch of noise. So we uh, did an experiment just saying, okay, this is a, a correct way of lining um, a signal and then with a bunch of uh, cables wound up. So what we found um, in this example was a 14% error um, just with all the cables um, wound up with all the extra noise. So we always suggest to um, lay the cables um, uh, give a, a little bit of space between all the cables. And if you do have to wind them up, um, kind of do a zigzag pattern. Don't go into like a, a big coil, a big round coil. Um, so sometimes, um, especially if you're running um, voltage, um, just pulling, like in this example here, this was a power supply um, going into a test rig and the data supply with uh, with noise. We simply just unzip tied all of the, the cables, move the cables apart, um, and it cleaned up the data. If you do have to cross a power supply, um, we always suggest at 90% or 90 degree, making sure that all of your, um, you know, your voltage noise is reduced. So thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions, um, you can reach us at our support line and look forward to any other of our videos. We have a lot on our website and also on YouTube. Thanks. Have a good